Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us on the Torah study line this evening. Hallelujah. And um, you got the email. We're going to look at the uh, um, the missing missing commandments. We'll just talk about it. And hallelujah. And at the end of it, we will remain on this line for those that will will be in the uh, intercession this evening. We will not go to the other line. We're here. Um, Heavenly Father, I want to bless and thank you for all the awesome um, testimonies I've been hearing in my ears today and yesterday about hallelujah things that you have done. So we bless you and we ask you to forgive us and have mercy upon us, giving honor unto you, Father, and honor unto your Son, Yahushua HaMashiach, and honor to your Holy Spirit. And please take a hold of us and and show us what you want to uh, show us out of the Torah study uh, tonight. Hallelujah. First, uh, first we're going to uh, read. Oh, boy, I had marked it off in now just a moment. Oh, boy. First, we're going to read from uh, Hoshea, because Father has given us knowledge or given us things uh, to understand. The, the the revelation that he's given to us so that we'll be able to share it with other people. Father says people perish from, from lack of knowledge. And I, I could say also from lack of research and seeking after him. Uh, Hosea uh, chapter 4. And let me say something about um, this lack of knowledge. It says the Hebrews fell from Godly grace, well, somebody would say the Jews, but it actually was the Hebrews. Well, anyway, Hebrews fell from godly grace because of their disobedience to the laws and statutes of Yahuwah. Israel had a controversy with Yahuwah. And the parallel is what had, had, has to happen to, uh, to his people throughout history. The, the Africans, is how they identified here, lacked the knowledge of their cultural traditions. The Euro, a Gentile reigns over them, not because of the Euro Gentile's greatness, but due to the Africans' lack of knowledge. Much of the Bible was written by African men who, because of their disobedience and violations of the laws and statutes and instructions, lost favor with Yahuwah. Therefore, they yielded the rule or dominion of the world to the Euro Gentiles for an appointed period of time. Uh, African endemic uh, peoples must return to their God because he traded his African glory for that which does not profit. He exchanged his God for God that could not hear redeem. Things that have touched the black African soul have become strange to him. And that's in the African book, a Bible, uh, in which it helps us to understand the history that has been taken away. He, uh, Hosea 4 says, Hear the word of Yahuwah. You children of Israel, for Yahuwah has a tra- controversy with the inhabitants of the land because there is no truth, no mercy, no knowledge of God in their hand. By swearing and lying and killing and stealing and committing adultery, they break out and blood touches blood. Therefore shall the land mourn and every one that dwelleth therein shall languish with the beasts of the field and with the fowls of heaven. Yea, the fishes of the sea also shall be taken away. Yet let no man strive nor approve another, for your people are as they that strive with the priests. Therefore shall you fall in the day, and the prophet also shall fall with you in the night, and I will destroy your mother. Verse 6 of Hosea. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I will also reject you, that you shall be no priest to me, seeing you have forgotten the law of thy Elohim, of thy God. I will also forget your children. And so uh, we're going to turn to uh, Matthew. Because here when we look at the Ten Commandments, we'll go over Ten Commandments. And we'll look at the Ten Commandments and see in our own mind whether what we're talking about is there or not there in another form in the commandments. Uh, Matthew, the 22nd chapter, and we'll start at the uh, 34th verse and read through the 40th. 
said the great commandment. But when the Pharisees had heard that he had put the Sadducees to silence, they were gathered together. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him and saying, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? And Yahushua, who is Jesus, said unto him, You shall love Yahuwah your Elohim, which is Lord thy God, with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. So it says on these uh, two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. And so when I was looking at the Ten Commandments in both uh, Exodus 20 and in Deuteronomy uh, 5, the, the, the difference that I always saw there was that in Exodus, at the beginning of Exodus 20, it um, reminds the people that Father brought them out of Egypt with a stretched out arm and on eagle's wing, and they, they were to remember that they were brought out of Egypt. But in Deuteronomy 5, uh, for them to remember that they were slaves in Egypt, or then it was put in where the Sabbath is as, as a sign that they are to observe and remember uh, that they were they were slaves in Egypt, so that was a difference that I noted. But I would always look at the commandments and and say I don't understand if uh, the love thy neighbor as yourself. Where how come that's not there when Messiah say that was the second um, his second great great commandment. So. But I would always wonder about it, and I think back in 2003, I was looking, I was looking for information to see where that, where that was, because I had pulled these papers uh, way back then, and uh, and it said that there was a missing, uh, missing uh, commandment, and so I saw all of this, but I'm saying, well, I really don't know what to do with this. So I looked up the um, the commandments listed on it says in the book from the book of the law, a book that was translated in uh, 1851, and it's the uh, Ten Commandments are the ones that we normally know. And I'll, I'll say a shortened version of it: Thou shall love Yahuwah your Elohim. One, two, you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Three. This says three here. Remember the Sabbath day, so this is another order here too. As thyself, five, honor thy father and thy mother. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's inheritance. So you see here it has, has number four written as thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And number three is remember the Sabbath day, but in the, and the one that we have in Exodus, Exodus 20, uh, we have it down as the, as the, uh, as the fourth commandment. And so what has happened is that, let me see where my paper, some of the people kind of split, split the commandments. And they made, they made, um, I'm trying to get my piece of paper here, you because it's not in my head. Just hold it a minute. Where well, is it split? In the uh, there there are three incorrect ways of, of counting the commandments according to what I got here. In the in the Catholic numbering, number ten is split. It says, "Thou shalt not covet your neighbor's goods." Is number nine, and number ten would be, "Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife." And in the Protestant number, it says number one. Is split, and that's where that's where we normally go to the um, to the uh, Protestant to the pro- Protestant part, and then and the, and the Jewish part. So the Protestant part says, "I am the Lord thy God; thou shalt have no other gods before me." That's number one. And number two, thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image; thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. And the Jewish numbering, number one, is split. 
I am the Lord thy God who have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other God before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. Thou shalt not bow down to them, not serve them. Now, most of us in our lives have followed the Protestant and the, and the uh, Jewish uh, way of saying uh, the, co- the commandments and reading them out of, out of the word. Hallelujah. And But we hear Messiah saying over and over, you know, he's reminding us of uh, loving the neighbor as ourselves. And so um, I'm going to try to make this as short as I can because of the time period. Now, the missing commandment can be inferred, it says, from the words of Yahushua. And so we look in Matthew 7, 28 and 29. Um, it says, uh, and it came to pass, then Yahushua, uh, Jesus had ended these saying, the people were astonished at his doctrine. For he taught them as one having authority and not as scribes. Sometimes Yahushua enumerated the commandments. For example, Matthew nineteen sixteen through 19 says, And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do, that I may have eternal life? And he said unto him, Why well, callest you, you me good, thou me good? There is none good but one that is, is Yahuwah, God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. And he said unto him, Which? And Yahushua said, You shall do no murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, honor thy father and thy mother, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And uh, then in Matthew uh, 22, 36 through 40, the master, which is the great commandment in the law, and Yahushua said unto him, you shall love the Lord thy God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these commandments hang all the law and the prophets. And so it seems like it's clear enough that you shall love your neighbor as yourself. It's one of the Ten Commandments you would think. How, and, uh, but uh, we, 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 we are not, we don't really, well, I won't say everybody, all right? I'm just saying I had even forgotten that I had read this and I had forgotten that I had often asked this question. If love your neighbor as yourself is, is so important, how come it's not here with the commandments? And then when I saw the group that did have it listed, then I had to ask myself, well, the last commandment that we actually read says, do not covet your neighbor's house or anything. Could that be another way that you're saying love your neighbor as yourself? So then, you know, after I found it with it actually written there, uh, as the fourth commandment, and uh, the uh, remember the Sabbath as the third instead of the fourth, I said, well, okay, maybe that makes sense. And so I want to open this up for discussion uh, for us to to tell me what you think about this, because remember, everything we find is not necessarily not necessarily what it is unless Father opened up the eyes of our understanding so that we will pause a minute. I want to say something else. I also know that the commandments and everything from studying you all, not any other way in, in Revelation, that Father's already told me over and over and over countless, numerous times, there is yet another language. There is yet another language. Hallelujah. And the Hebrew language is all the way down on the chart of Afro-Asiatic, uh, languages. It's not, it's not up there at the top. Um, the Am- Amharic, Phoenician, and other different languages come before that. So then in the same article, it says, uh, the origin of the problem it says the ancient Israelites still had possession of the tablets of stone at the time that these uh, commandments were translated into Hebrew from whatever language Yahuwah dictated them, perhaps Egyptian. Uh, uh, and it says um, there is no reason for there to be an omission in two places in the Bible, which means Exodus 20 and Deuteronomy 5, 
unless it, it were deliberate. And so uh, the Egyptian part led me to go back to the the Horn of Africa, which leads you to, uh, well, anyway, a couple of languages, but there's even yet another language other than Gies and Amharic. And so uh, I looked at all of that, and I, I, all I'm sitting around here now is we'll look at uh, the um, Deuteronomy, or what we look at, the Deuteronomy, um, I'm sorry, Exodus 20, and I'll read these these commands, and you tell me if it feels like it should be there or not, and then then we'll discuss it. Just give me a minute. We just want all this down in the event that something comes up when you're having a discussion out there, and somebody say, "Well, then where's that commandment?" And the Father left everything up to us, not up to us. We ought to search and seek after Him, so that as we look at I, I, um, Isaiah. Uh, where it tells you that that Father uh, Messiah is blessed with uh, the Spirit, or Father, the Spirit of wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and so forth and so on, so that if we are studying anything and we have put on the Messiah, then he gives us the ability to search and then recognize by his Spirit a truth. Other than that, we won't know the truth. We'll go off track. We need the Holy Spirit to reveal truth to, to us. So in Isaiah 11 it says, And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of the roots, and, and the spirit of Yahuwah shall rest upon him. The spirit of wisdom. So that's what you got when you accepted the Jesus Yahushua, the Messiah. The spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of Yahuwah. That's what keeps you from sinning. And so there we have that. And so we put on Messiah. So when we look at Exodus 20, oh, boy, time going fast. All right, the Ten Commandments. Um, let me see if I can read them. Well, you all can just turn to the Ten Commandments or go to the Ten Commandments and look at the Ten Commandments. And and uh, instead of me reading, it's going to take up too much time. Uh, instead of me reading, just look at it, and we'll just have a discussion right now whether we agree with what I found in this paper that that commandment is missing or whether you are all right with what you see. So now I'm going to open it up for discussion. Um, I want to bring up, if you didn't already, I did have to go tend to the little one for a few minutes. Um, but in Exodus 32, And uh, verse 19, we hear, And it came to pass, as soon as he came nigh unto the camp, that he saw the calf and the dancing, and Moses' anger waxed hot, and he cast the tablets out of his hands and break them beneath the mount. So I was thinking about this when you were reading about Messiah and how he um, was uh, quoting what the people must do according to the commandments. Well, couldn't it be possible that, you know, Messiah, of course, would have known what all of them were supposed to be on all of the tablets? And maybe there could be a connection to when, you know, tablets were broken, you know, something would appear to be left out or missing, but Messiah would know what they were all, what they all were anyway. So that's just a little comment I want to throw in there about that. That's not a little comment, lady. That is... Absolutely an excellent comment because you, you not only brought in the, well, we say the old part right here about the break part, but you, you, um, blessed us to think about that and, and the fact that Messiah came and he was, he was, he was letting people know that they were breaking the commandments and the laws and he is the word. So that was a powerful, uh, uh, insightful verse for you to use. Thank you very much. Because that word break there and they had to redo them. All right. Anyone else? Yeah. Hallelujah. Anyone have a comment or a question? It's the commandments that you live by. So, do you ever have a question about it? Shalom. Hello. Good evening. <laughs> uh, I I too 
um, have to agree with Sister Regina that I thought about that thing, that very thing, how when uh, the, the commandments were given um, the first time and then they had to be given a second time um, because Moses broke the tablets. And um, so I I could just, yeah, that, that may certainly be more to that. And um, I get, you know, I haven't really studied this so much, um, but I really do appreciate because I heard this today and some other things that I was reading through, and I because I'm it was, it goes into what we're going to talk about at the end is where our studies are, and I have to go back to Isaiah, get you know where it says um, that that because Father has a spirit of wisdom and understanding that if we don't understand something because we're in Him. It, we we um, we can say, well, you know, Father, I don't understand this, but I know that you do. So please help my understanding. So please help our understanding uh, to to study this out. So I I would just say for me that I I feel like I would need to um, probably study this further further, kind of looking at everything side by side because I was trying to keep up going back and forth in. Um, because I, I have, uh, like, hard copies of New King James um, and NIV, and I have another version, which I was actually reading out of today um, to, to um, Danny and my grandson. Um, and, I mean, everything seemed in order, like, I didn't feel like there was nothing missing, but I, I you know, I, I'll just say that I haven't studied this in depth, so, um, but I do appreciate that that we're looking at, we have to, you know, always be searching and, and um, you know, just going deeper, so I, I appreciate this um, study and do it and to do it um be able to do it uh further on my own to kind of look at things like i said um comparing and seeing this what what father speaks to me about it so uh, i think that i think that's it so thank you i i think that was an excellent response because all this is about is just let us know to keep searching and seeking for the knowledge that might not be here, and you can relate it to the books that are not here, the books that have been removed, just those uh, books and things. And so it's, it's up to us to have some knowledge of this, this possible discussion. We don't know who we'll uh, contact, uh, come in contact with in the future, and we will know that we have had this discussion, and and you will know that Messiah discusses in the New Covenant, and he also, and not just the New Covenant, it's in Le- Leviticus, as what well, Leviticus 19:18 as well. So we have the the first and the last. So we don't have to go into any more about this 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 uh, this uh, evening, except that let me see. Let me just read what this article says about uh, Commandment Number Four, and then we'll we'll close this part of it. And I appreciate you all even being on the line because as, as I noticed when Torah study come, uh, not many people come to story, Torah study and they wonder why there are certain things going on in their lives because they're missing the Torah study and the questions that need to be asked. This is an extremely important uh, um, time to be together so that we can actually talk and not just go to listen because if you do this, here, then you would you then that's why the people spend a lot of time on on YouTube just listening, so not discussing back and forth, but just listening. So if you're listening and never discussing, how will you go to the deeper depth of what Father want to give us and have that that deep balance? Because Messiah was teaching the people, they were asking questions. And it's hard to do that on Sabbath. So we have to keep praying for the people to make a way because adversaries out there keeping people away from, you know, from that and from prayer too, those that can do it. So we have to pray some more. 
hallelujah, and uh, just making a point, and so we need to we need to tighten up a bit because we won't learn if we don't ask any questions or if we don't, you know, share what we know so that we know we're on the same page. So when, when trouble comes, then you're light. You're like a light feather because you didn't get the depth of the study in you. Uh, that goes for all of us, no matter who we are. We have to study. We have to pray. We have to um, meditate on his word, and then we have to do something. We have to, we have to give, we have to give of us. Everybody know this. I'm just repeating all of this. So anyway, I'm going to close this off. And we're not close it off so much as go into the next part about where we are with our journey. And, and if you haven't continued your journey, just tell me something tonight, uh, so you can share that, that you still are on the move. But I'm going to let somebody else go instead of me going first this time. So anybody right. want to be in the... Um, yeah, I okay. have a couple of scriptures that I'm going to read. And after I read them, I'll tell you why I selected them. Um, so the first one is Isaiah 41.10. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous hand. And let's see. Where's this? Well, let me scroll down. Uh, let's see, the next one is Psalm 20, verse 1. May Yahuwah answer you when you are in distress. May the name of the God of Jacob protect you. And this is the last one, Psalm 34, 19. The righteous person may have many troubles, but Yahuwah delivers him from them all. And um, the reason I selected these particular scriptures, uh, I'm limited on the details that I can give, but I will tell you that um, at my husband's job, he was being untreated fairly, unfairly with something, and some other people uh, were moved to stand up for him. And um, it meant a great deal. Because the thing that was being done was um, very, very hurtful. And, you know, he's about to retire. This coming Wednesday is his, his last day. And the fact of just how things were done was, was almost cruel. And so when these people stepped up, it was, um, I, I obviously it was answered prayers because we asked for that very thing to happen. You know, uh, Bethany, Brian, myself, Rabbi, um, you know, I'm sure she probably had some other people praying for the situation, um, and that yeah. prayer was answered. So it was a reminder to me. It was as if Father was saying, see, you're not doing this for naught. Everything that you're doing, the reading, the studying, the speaking, um, the change in your life, living by the scriptures, proving that the fruits of the Spirit do work. Um, Father had Brian, even in the midst of this, he still um, acted with dignity and kept the fruits of the Spirit, and Father softened the hearts of some people. So uh, this was more of a reminder week that he... What we're reading does work. It does do something in our lives. And that's the thing I wanted to share. And I know Bethany has something, but um, Rabbi, did you want to tack on to that? I, I, all I can say is co confirm. And I've been hearing wonderful things all week. Oh, well, the week just started, but I've been hearing. Hallelujah, yes. I agree with what you just said totally, completely. All right, well, I'm handing the phone to Bethany. Hi, good evening, okay. everyone. Good evening. Um, so so because of my conference, um, it's had me uh, land in Proverbs. You know, uh, a lot of the things that I talk about on my conference is to show what we're supposed to be doing, giving information and encouragement. I love Proverbs, and um, I'm going to read really quick because I know time's ticking. Uh, Proverbs 12:15. To 28. Um, I'm just starting at the 12 one because that's 
where I stopped and then I read on. I was like, oh, this is going to be perfect. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but he who heeds counsel is wise. A fool's wrath is known at once, but a prudent man covers shame. He who speaks truth declares righteousness, but a false but a false witness deceit. There is one who speaks like the piercings of a sword, but the tongue of the wise promotes health. The truthful lips shall be established forever, but a lying tongue is but for a moment. Deceit is in the heart of those who devise evil, but counselors of peace have joy. No grave trouble will overtake the righteous, but the wicked shall be filled with evil. Lying lips are an abomination to the Lord, but those who deal truthfully are his delight. A prudent man conceals knowledge, but the heart of fools proclaims foolishness. The hand of the diligent will rule, but the lazy man will be put to forced labor. Anxiety in the heart of man causes depression, but a good word makes it glad. The righteous shall, excuse me, the righteous should choose his friends carefully, for the way of the wicked leads them astray. The lazy man does not roast what he took in hunting, but diligence, but diligence is man's precious possession. And the way of righteousness is life, and in its pathway there is no death. So I I was thinking a lot about, um, you know, what was going on and what we should be doing. I really like how Proverbs is, is written. It, it, it really <laughs> shows you how we're supposed to be thinking, what we're supposed to be doing. And if we do things not right, it, it, it's self-explanatory what happens. Um, so that's 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 where I'm at because in my <laughs> conference, um, it actually led me in Proverbs. Um, uh, so that, that ends uh, my journey. Okay, thank you very much. Hallelujah for both your comments. And... Um, um, I'll, I'll comment later, Mary. Do you want me to tell you where you have arrived in your reading with your journey through the through the scripture? <laughs> and and then here's the other thing. I'll have to talk to you later, but I'm praying that you want to take on an assignment of of, of the journeys that we are on through the Bible, so we can know where we're stopping at. Are you laughing? Wow. Do you I remember your journey? <laughs> you don't uh, remember your journey. No, I do. What are you laughing about? You went one uh, chapter? No, I'm laughing because um, the first scripture that, that Sister Regina uh, read was one that I, I had to read, I wanted to read. Um, <laughs> so apparently we're, we're um, thinking along the same lines here. So this was from Isaiah. Um, Isaiah 41. So I'm, I am still in Isaiah. I was in Isaiah last week and I'm still, um, uh, on my journey here. And, um, Isaiah 41.10. And I'm, I'm gonna actually read through 16, uh, verse 16, I think. Um, uh, fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God, or your Elohim. I will strengthen you. Yes. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Behold, all those who were incensed against you shall be ashamed and disgraced. They shall be as nothing, and those who strive with you shall perish. You you shall seek them and not find them. Those who contend with you, those who contend with you, those who war against you shall be as nothing as a non-existent thing. For I, the Lord, your Elohim, will hold your right hand, saying to you, Fear not, I will help you. Fear not, you worm, Jacob, you men of Israel. I will help you, says Yahuwah. 
and your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. Behold, I will make you into a new threshing sledge with sharp teeth. You shall thresh the mountains and beat them small and make the hills like chaff. You shall winnow them. The wind shall carry them away and the whirlwind shall scatter them. You shall rejoice in the, in the Lord, in Yahuwah, and glory in the Holy One of Israel. Ah, uh, wow. So, wow. Yes. Wow. All the reads tonight. Go ahead. Oh. Mm. So, mm. this, this just, I mean, right here, fear not, you know, fret not, like, calm, calm your, you know, be calm, be still. Trust me, you know, like, settle down, like how, you know, when Messiah spoke to the storm, when he, you know, he, they woke him up uh, when he was sleeping in the boat, and he, you know, he speaks, so we, we have, we have that, we have that, and, and we, we can hold on to that, and then his promises, I will help you, behold, and he, you know, he's showing us, like, I can just, you know, picture picture uh father just say you know taking his hand and and just his you know just his arm and just saying behold look look at look at all these things look at look at me look at my promises look at what i'm 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 going to do to your enemies you 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 shall try seek them but you won't find them mm-hmm. so that's a that's so we can we we know that he's fighting for us we know that he he is destroying our enemies. You, those who contend with us, he will contend with them. We don't have to worry about it. We we it, it's like in the warfare in in Ephesians when he talks about um, how to do spiritual war, warfare and who um, we're warring against. And so I think Rabbi, you had said one time that you know we have the, the New Testament warfare. But we also have the Old Testament warfare where where it's um, not different, but it, it's not – in the New Testament, it's not really new, so to speak. Um, does that make sense? Yes. Um, right? Okay. So then when it says, behold, I will make you into a new thresh – this, this is a mouthful – threshing sledge with sharp teeth. So you shall thresh the mountains and beat them and make the hills like chaff. So to me, this is all about uh, using Father's word. He puts his word. We have to, we have to put the, his word into our mouth and use it to uh, take out our enemies. You know, we're not to, to, take, to talk to people like this. You know, we're, we're not to cut people down with our words. We're to cut down the the spirits behind the the people like that are coming against us. So I um we're seeing this in operation. We saw this by Sister Regina's testimony that when we pray and we use the armor, we use the spiritual warfare, the weapons of our warfare which are not carnal and Father promises us victory so i'm i'm just so happy and excited about this and it's like this is we're learning we're seeing in father's word he's showing us who he is and how we're to go about um our our lives in him not in fear uh, but with with strength and knowing that we we have the victory, and knowing that He fights for us, um, there there were a few more um, scriptures that uh, I highlighted into uh, forty one, uh, no forty two. I'm sorry, uh, one through nine. About um, do I have time, or or is there are there more people? Do I? No, go ahead. No, no, it's just us. Okay. Our divorce so, that you've heard already. Okay. Um, just, oh, my elect one in whom my soul delights. This is Isaiah 42, 1 and through 9. 
I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the Gentiles. He will not cry out nor raise his voice nor cause his, his voice to be heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break and smoking flax he will not quench. He will bring forth justice for truth. He will not fail nor be discouraged till he has established justice in the earth and the coastland shall wait for his law. Thus says Yahuwah, our Elohim, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread forth the earth and that which comes from it, who gives breath to the people on it and, and spirit to those who walk on it. I, Yahuwah, have called you into righteousness and will hold your hand. I will keep you and give you as a covenant to the people, as a light to the Gentiles, to open blind eyes, to bring out prisoners from the prison, those who sit in darkness from the prison house. I am Yahuwah, that is my name, and my glory I will not give to another, nor my praise to carved images. Behold, the former things have come to pass, and new things I declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. And just click uh, more, 42.16. I will bring the blind by a way they did not know. I will lead them in paths they have not known. I will make darkness light before them and crooked places straight. These things I will do for them and not forsake them. Hear you deaf, uh, verse 18, hear you deaf and look you blind that you may see who is blind but my servant or deaf as my messenger whom I send who is blind as he who is perfect and blind as the servant as the Lord's servant seeing many things but you do not observe opening the ears but he does not hear and I'll, a few more 43 fear not so here we hear that again fear not for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned. Nor shall the flame scorch you. Fear not, for I am with you. I will bring your descendants from the east and gather you from the west. I say to the north, give them up. And to the south. Do not keep them back. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Verse 8, bring out the blind people who have eyes and the deaf who have ears. Uh, Indeed, 13, indeed the day was, indeed before the day was, I am he. And there is no one who can deliver out of my hand. I work and who will reverse it? 18 and 19. Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall bring, shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. 25, 26, and then I'm done. I, even I, am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake, and I will not remember your sins. Put me in remembrance. Let us contend together. State your case that you may be acquitted. Oh, Heavenly Father, I just, I thank you for the word. I thank you for your promises. I thank you for you show, you're showing us, you're revealing to us through your word who you are and, and what you are doing and what, what you've done, what you're doing and what you intend to do. So I thank you that we can stand on your promises. They will not fail. They're not lack. They're not slack. They're not late, but they're on time. So I thank you. I thank you that you are working on our behalf day and night. You never cease nor nor stop. So we thank you. And I thank you that we can move forward in knowing that you're doing a new thing for all of us in all of our lives. And we'll continue on this, this journey, uh, through your word and, um, in your righteousness. So I just thank you and I praise you, Father, for, for this and all the, the um, uh, testimonies that are coming forward. And we, we continue and we look forward to more and more. So um, I think this conti- uh, 
ends my portion, and uh, thank you for letting me um, go through this and, and just um, speak Father's word. Thank you. I thank Father, and I thank you, and I want to ask you a few questions. That was that was awesome. Now, well, did you did we did you put? I didn't put my date down when I started the scripture over again. Did you put your date down when you started the journey? I I I, I probably did. did. Say, that's a, okay. Okay. Well, we we'll talk about it later because I'm going to ask you to do something. For me, as as we check the journey that we are, we are all taking from Matthew all the way through and to Genesis all the way all the way back and continue the journey, how have you felt doing this? Because because I I did it to to help to encourage you as well, but it's a normal thing for me. So how did you feel having to, you know, going through the scripture um, and uh, did you have a situation with it by trying to do it daily? You mean, you mean did it cost, like, was it yeah, right. difficult? Do you, do you do it, yeah, do you do it daily or do you just, do you have a routine yeah. that you actually do it daily? I do it daily. Now, I'm a, I'm going to say there have been a, only a handful of instances where I have missed a day or two. But okay. as I would say, yes, as a general rule, um, I do it daily. Okay, I got you. I got you. I just want to, because this is what we want, we, you know, as the people join us and everything, we want them to go on that journey, and we want to pray for those that have difficulty because the enemy want to derail and, and keep us from going through there. So that's the purpose, and, and has, has it made a difference in your mind? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. It, it, uh, do you feel like you? It uh, causes you to be a little bit strong because you can still go all over the scripture, but you just have that to like keep you anchored. Exactly. Absolutely. I, I think it's okay. it's definitely both. Like I do, um, like the the um, pat like where we and I start in Matthew, and then just go through it, and then yes. um. Yeah, and then I do have um, days like today where um, I was a, going a little bit different places, but I still was on my journey. You know, I didn't neglect the. Okay. the yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead. You know, I didn't neglect my daily uh, reading and listening. Okay. So I, Let's see I tried, I'm sorry. Come that's here. okay. I was going to say, I was to try something a little bit different um, today because I listen, I've been listening to the King James on audio and I have a new King, a new King James hard copy. So I was trying to follow along because sometimes when I'm just only listening to it, I'm more distracted. I if I don't just if I sit and listen, but sometimes I have to. Sometimes I'm doing different things, and so it uh, just I have to kind of tweak. You know, there's tweaking going on. Let me say. That. I understand. I I don't. You don't have to. Do, I won't. I don't. You you answered, and because okay. we want to keep encouraging the people, because. That's where the strength comes from that. And sometimes people think as we're taking the journey that they can't go elsewhere in the scripture. That's not it. They can go anywhere yeah. they want to. Yep. Just that, right, just that they get, they stay on that journey and get back in their car and go ahead on and drive and they can go sightseeing. Okay, I just wanted to, to find out if this is working for you and I know, I know, uh, there are others, but I got to catch <laughs> All right. Well, uh, I want to get the the scriptures that you read so that I can I can start putting down where people are so we can see what the journey that that they're on. So you stopped in Isaiah. Was it you stopping forty one? Forty one. Forty one. Okay. Let me see. All right. And I got some of the scriptures. And um, 
Okay. Uh, Bethany, I just need you to give me your, your name of the scripture that you read. Powerful, powerful scripture. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Hallelujah. All these scriptures was just timely. While she looks that up again, she has to bring it back up on her phone. Uh, I just want oh, to okay. say. okay. I know it was uh, in Proverbs. Sister, okay. Sister, Sister Mary, you um, definitely were right. Definitely on the same uh, train of thought because when you were talking, what also came back to my mind is other conferences when we talked about how um, Father looks out for his chosen people. Um, you know, he's got he's got his chosen people's back. You mess with them, he messes with you. You bless them, he blesses you. So I was just thinking about that just previous conference that we talked yeah. about. So that was awesome. Great. All right, so um, Bethany, Bethany's ready now. Go ahead. Thank you. I don't, Can I don't, you always come in and help? I mean, you just, it's just such a, a, a absolute blessing. Hallelujah. Because I, I, I'm just, I agree with you. I, what I'm trying to say is, I'm focused on. If I'm focused somewhere else, you always come in, or somebody on the line always come in at the perfect time. Awesome. Yeah. I hope that made sense to everybody. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead, Bethany. Okay. Um, now I don't have a date for when I stop this, but I. It's I, okay. I, just the day, what you read today. Yeah. Um. Well, I actually read this yesterday, Proverbs twelve fifteen. Um, Proverbs twelve fifteen. Yes. Okay. Yes, and I actually read after that on the conference, but yeah, that's that's where I stopped. That's where you stopped, or that's where you started. Um. What? Well, when I was reading, I had stopped at Proverbs twelve fifteen, and then I started going on from from uh, there, so I was just finishing it up while I was on the conference. Okay, that's what I wanted to know. When you finished it up, where did, what, what was the last number? Okay. okay, the last number was 28. Thank you. It was powerful, lady. All right, Regina, everything. All right, well, we can we can close this off. Uh, I didn't mean to go on, but I'm just, because I want the, the people that are joining us, we want to encourage them to dive in quicker the quicker they, they dive into the word and stay on that journey, the more uh, balance or the more the depth of the foundation is, the cornerstone. And that's what this is. This, this is what it was for me, and that's what it is for the family. It, it causes you to stand even more firm. And, 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 and when you read about fear not and, and all of that, I mean, we feel it. <laughs> and different parts I know, anyway. right? Powerful. Yes. And, 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 and I can tell how powerful yours is. You, you see what, what happened. We, we used to could talk really often. Now it's not that often. That meant that there's a lot of strength is going into it and all that work you're doing that you don't talk about. And then coming with, with a, with praise report and you all, I don't know if I gave you a praise report on this end, but if I did, I think I told somebody that the man, uh, one of the men that worked with me at public access and then were closed, the public access, his wife had gone in for surgery on her heart and I've forgotten what kind of surgery it was, but, uh, he thought he would be out like six or eight weeks. And his, his wife, he told me, he said, well, my wife is home. She was in rehabilitation or whatever you do for a while and they discharged her. She's home, and he had taken her to the beauty parlor. Well, so if I hadn't told you all that, I mean, this, he, he seemed like in his message, he seemed like he was surprised. And I, and I said to Father, I said, ooh, all of this work is going on here. At least we are hearing it. I wish I had it in their voices, you know, but if I don't get it, I'm going to have to start documenting. You all help me with this. If you hear a testimony, and, and in case I didn't get to jot it down so I can bring it back. But anyway, we're doing a lot of talking on here tonight. But these are things, Father, is getting us ready. And that awesomeness about Brian and the, and the, and the job and, and all of that, I mean, this is big. We, we know Father's oh, hand. Anytime, anytime something is going on and get us uh, upset, I mean, a little bit beyond we know Father's hand is going to move in it somewhere on our behalf because mm. you just said it earlier. Father fights for us, and uh, he said uh, through Abraham, 
if you if they bless you, I will bless them. And uh, and then a lot of people don't even know uh, the uh, they don't know the, who the people are anyway. But here's a wonderful thing: is that Messiah came into the picture, a uh, physical picture, and he said, hey, "You know, you born again." Well, he didn't say it like that. But the teaching throughout the new covenant is whosoever will, even though he said it in the old covenant, it's like a huge door open for those in the new in the new covenant where they know they become as one home born and and they become part of Israel and it just makes a big difference. And when you were talking about the old covenant and the warfare and everything, mm-hmm. and then uh, and we know we think Israel as soon as we hear war going on and everything. We're Israel against the nations and things. That's what we, well, anyway, let's say that's what I get in the Old Covenant. And all of our people, there's no no question about whether these people are, are Hebrews or not, or Israelite. We don't have, you don't have the Jews mixed in with, when I say Jews, I mean how it's mixed in where you get off track. And you don't think about the Hebrews, you just think about the Jews or the people, so you they got you so you get off track. But when you come to the New Testament, you, uh, Messiah is here and lots of Jewish this, Jewish that is said, but somehow he managed to keep us on the same track. Now what point am I making? It's almost like the warfare in the, in the old covenant. We see lots of the outward going and I'm uh, speaking for myself. And you have the prophets that father speaking through the prophets and, and the law is there and, and they're talking about the law. And then when you get to the new covenant, it's like, it's like, Messiah just take the lid off so you know that you are part of this, whether you were Hebrew or not. And then he gives you how to overcome the adversary. It's like it becomes really a personal thing. Does that make sense what I'm saying, you all? Yes. Yes, Because you really put on the whole armor, and you really know Messiah is saying to you, you know, be like me, and you will do these mighty works where, where, um, it, things may be said in the old covenant, but not quite like Messiah brings it home uh, to say that, you know, I'm praying for you and, and uh, my glory, uh, I put my glory in you. Well, that's him because he's in us. So we get to go in. It's almost like we go in. I'm, I'm speaking like this. It's almost as if we go inside the temple and put to practice all the things that that the uh, Father has put there for us, and then we become the the earthen vessel or the temple that he's working out of. I think this is some awesome thing. Well, anyway, you are going on and on here, but I think you got what I'm saying, right? Because yeah. in, in the old covenant, it's like Father's there thundering. He thunders and he talks, and you know he's Ooh. no nonsense. Uh, he said, right. I'm, I'm not playing with this. This is my commandments. These are my laws. I have oh, set them here. You disobey me. This is what's going to happen to you. Moses, no matter how he could, let me, let me go. Let me go in, please. He said, you're not going in because you did oh. not sanctify me before the people. He drove that point home everywhere. Hallelujah. And hit my commandments and laws. He put that whole Psalm 119 there to remind oh. us over and over again. My commandments and laws are important to your life. You want to be healed? Obey my commandments and laws. And see, they don't understand Messiah came and he's the word and he, he, his word comes to the people and they ask, word, you know, I need to be healed. So the word, Messiah's spirit go to them and, and the word heals them. Because that's a mm. promise for us. After he he was died and resurrected, I think this this is so awesome. What Father has put together for all of us, and then letting us know that ministering angels in the old covenant. He told you in the old covenant, I made my ministers flames of fire. They are ministering my 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 angels of fire and fire. And then come over in the New Testament, and you got the one that is the fire walking around talking to us, so that so that we could drink in the word, eat the word, and understand. My goodness, we are flames of fire. Well, I got to shut this off now because I didn't got carried away. You all, Ooh, I mean, hallelujah. this is just so awesome. And when he tells you, ask me anything. How many times he said to all of us, ask, ask, mm-hmm. ask, ask me. Mm-hmm. But he also said, obey my commandments, obey my laws. And uh, and then he also tell us over and over again, forgive each other, forgive each other. 
Hallelujah. That's why people don't understand what's going to happen with Christians and things if they don't do the commandments and the laws. Messiah himself said, uh, somebody asked him, how, how many times should I forgive anybody? And seven times, seventy, whatever. He said, keep on forgiving them. So we know Father got some plan for these people, that's all, the, all of us that's trying to get it right. Hallelujah. I know I can't go up there and say, I got it all right, you all. Because if I had it all right, Every, everywhere I go, I don't care where the cancer victim is. If I walk into that room, that cancer stuff is supposed to leave if the people have faith to forgive, or uh, to forgive people or to ask Messiah, but they ask doubting. And, uh, but sometimes Messiah just went on and healed them. And they didn't even ask. And this is what we're coming into because this is happening in our lives now. That's why these praise reports are coming back. And these testimonies are important. And we just do not hear the, enough of the testimonies. Hallelujah. But anyway, let me close this off, you all. I done got all excited. So here with the situation with, again, with Brian's job and everything, we're watching the mighty move of Father. We're still watching for them cars. They're going to show up. We just don't know Hallelujah. when, but they're going to show up somehow. So let me close this off, you all, because I think I carried away here. Heavenly Father, I just bless you for all the sharing tonight. Everything was perfectly linked in with each other to give us courage and, and to bless us and to give us strength. I just pray that you bless everyone that's not on this line. And all I'm saying is encouraging them, I pray, to come to the line, to come to this Torah study, because they have a peace that they can give to us as well. I ask that you touch all our bodies tonight and that you keep them refreshed, renewed, and healed, and whole, and well. And I pray, Father, that you fix up Minister Brian from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet. And all those people at the sheriff's department, all that they're supposed to do, I pray that you send your word and fix them all up. Hallelujah, and fix him up and fix us up so that we all expecting you to do a mighty, a mighty blessing because you'll be glorified through the works of his hand because his light has been shining. Now, Father, we're going off this line. We want to thank you tonight for our returning families that are rejoicing because husbands have come home, children have come home, children have passed grades, children in college, the babies going into kindergarten and all these different things. So we thank you as we go off tonight, Father. Don't know what kind of Torah study it was, but it sure has got us excited in our hearts. So may Father bless you all and everyone, and I'm going to just click this off, and then I'm going to click it back on into the intercession. Thank you all very much for cooperating with us. Shalom, shalom. Thank you. Hallelujah. Let me go out and come back in here. Well, I'm always, I'm going to close my eyes. I done got carried away. Hallelujah. All right. Uh,